Welcome one, welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 Podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how fantastic 300 amp hours of batteries are in Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs. My name is Amp Hour Tyler, and joining me in the studio is Mr. Denim Denim Denim. Jimmy Jet. <laughs> I was right. waiting for you to say lithium cube. Oh, lithium cube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for asking yourself. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a little buzzed. That was a lot of whiskey. It was a bit of whiskey. <laughs> Somebody might have had a heavy pour. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're recording this uh, on Thursday, mm-hmm. uh, a week ahead of when it's going to be released. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is officially Tyler's birthday today. Woo! Uh, not the day of the release date. No. Yeah, it's uh, last Thursday. It's, um, I'm a week old now. Yes. A week older. That's what I meant. By release date. Yes. By, yeah, by release date. My release date? <laughs> you should I don't not know have, when you're You should not have given me that much whiskey before <laughs> recording, man. No. <laughs> Oh, moving man. on. I moving think everybody on. else can follow along. Um, yeah, we got uh, a lot of stuff to do today. We do indeed. We, we do. have a bunch of updates mm-hmm, mm-hmm. about what we've been doing, getting ready for Cruise Moab. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of giveaways to go over. We do have a lot of giveaways to go over. Um, let's start with some giveaways, shall we? Sounds good. Cool. Uh, we had... Our uh, gift boxes all went out. They did. Uh, I think pretty much everybody has them by now. Oh, they, they should, should have them by yeah, now. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> if um, you did not get yours by now, please call us. Yeah, please call us. Um, but uh, yeah, we had uh, Steve from Summershine slash Total Off-Road Podcast uh, over on the show last Monday, a couple days ago, um, to talk about a big chunk of the box. So a uh, huge shout out to Steve. And um, we'll go over a little bit more of what's in the box maybe when we get back from Moab so that everybody else knows. But uh, if people want to start posting pictures online of what's in the boxes and uh, what you're going to be using them on, uh, go for it. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. You're free if you haven't done so already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's a good time to lead into the gift box tier is open. So mm-hmm. if you want to get in for the next gift box, which will be out in November, or October, excuse me, mm-hmm. it'll come out in October. You need to sign up now and you uh, it'll close at the end of the month, the gift, gift box tier. So get in it at this moment. Just uh, pause the podcast, go over to irate 4 by 4 log in. And go down to the watch, listen, and discuss section. Click on Snail Trail 4x4 form. And then if you're on the mobile, it's on the bo- at the bottom. And if you're on the uh, desktop, it's on the right side. Which uh, just to, you know, not to, you know, toot our hon- horns or anything. Um, Snail Trail 4x4 is now the first out of three. Yes. First place out of we three. Are. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's so. very nice. Yep. So go log in for that gift box tier if you want to move up. And just a friendly reminder, if you are changing tiers, you need to cancel your other tier. And you have to do that on your end through PayPal. We cannot do that for you. Correct. So um, let's see. Speaking of PayPal and tiers and people signing up. Yes. And tears as in like levels, not like not crying, crying. not yeah. all the work we have to go to yes. to figure out the <laughs> FNGs <laughs> and uh, birthdays and everything. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so we have those FNGs and birthdays. Um, so let's see. FNGs for March. FNGs for March. We have Uno. One. Uno FNGO, and it's Mr. Dustin Meeks. Dustin Meeks. Thank yeah. you. Welcome to the party. Yeah. If you're on Facebook, feel free to get into that Facebook squad or the um, snail squad group over there mm-hmm. and I'll add you up. Yep. And then for, let's see, one year birthdays for April. Oh, we have a bunch. Really? Yeah, because that's the, I guess that's the the month that people sign up typically. So one year birthdays for April. We have Aaron Little. Aaron Little. Thank you. Evan Cook. Mr. Cook. Anthony Martinez. Mr. Martinez, Evan Cook wasn't with us for longer. That seems odd. That does seem odd. Evan, if that's not right, let us know. Yeah, let us know if you've been here more than a year here. Um, Andrew Clamped. Andrew, thank you. Douglas Higby. 
Mr. Higby, thank you. Wesley Vieira. Mr. Vieira, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Uh, Nathaniel Perkins. Thank you, Nathaniel. Uh, Ryan Musta. Holy cow, there are a lot. <laughs> Mr. Musta. Casey, Gracias. Casey Hallinan. H Hallinan? Hallinan. Hallinan? Hall 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 how, how, Casey, thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Dave McKinney. Mr. McKinney, Rubicon mm -hmm. Trail Adventures. Yes, thank you. Mr. Trent Roberts. Mr. Trent Roberts, thanks for joining us on some podcasts as well. And none other than Mr. Lawless Corey. Ah, Lawless Corey. Uh, you know what I think this was? I think this is when we did the transition from uh, Patreon to Irate 4x4. Uh, so four. I had a bunch of people waiting for that. Yes. That's right. That's probably what that was. We had, yeah, that was a ton of one years. I'm um, happy to have you guys all around supporting the podcast for a year here. Thank you so much. Uh, two years. We have none. Really? Thanks, none. Thanks, none. Not to be confused with none. Yeah. He's a different <laughs> month. Yeah. And uh, three years. We have Robert Hogue. Hog. Hog. Hoggy. I'm going to say hog Hoggy. Robert Hoggy. Hoggy. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Weld's taco, making it all the way through the Rubicon in your taco. Good job, buddy. Let's we'll do that again this year. He wants to go to doozy. Oh, I, do I too. said it's probably not going to open. I don't think it's going to open this <laughs> at year. all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, yeah. we're considering somewhere else. We're in communications. We're going to, we're looking at some areas so, more so Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'd really love to go to either Bodie or Calico and do some of the wheeling out in Bodie or Calico. All that right. would be awesome. Mr. Weld's taco. Look into that. Yep. And uh, no four years because we haven't been around for four years yet. No, but we're almost up to our first four year. One more month. Less yeah. than a month. I think less than a month and we'll be at four years doing this podcast. Dang. Snail trail four by four. That's crazy. Um, and we'll roll over to 400 episodes, I think, in that month. Yeah. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. It's a fun little. Uh, or close to it. Maybe to just it. after. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, go us. So thank you guys for supporting the show. Honestly, I don't, I don't know if we would still be working at doing all the editing and arranging all the interviews and figuring everything out for this show. Um, if you guys didn't support it, so we'd probably be hanging out and, uh, trying to convince everybody how much we're not peasants and we should, they should talk to us and say hi to us out at off-road events events. But since we can say that we do a podcast, they kind of like, Oh, Hey, <laughs> Tyler, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. It's more along the lines of, Oh, Hey Jimmy, but usually, yeah, I'm whatever. the more attractive one. So uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So let's see. Let's we see have, have another big announcement. We're supposed to keep that one secret for a little while. Are we? Yeah. Okay. We have an, another, another big announcement. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can do that one. <laughs> uh, we've got a giveaway going on this month. We do. Okay. That one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got two gift boxes that we're donating mm -hmm. out to two lucky winners. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you already heard what's in one of, or the vast majority of what's in them mm -hmm. from Steve. And, but there are some other goodies in there, mm -hmm. which uh, we haven't disclosed. And I don't know why, but uh, there are some other fun goodies in there. So two lucky winners uh, sign up for the monthly giveaway. We'll get... Uh, some giveaway items, some extra gift boxes. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Uh, you guys uh, need to be in that before the end of the month, April 30th. Yes. So you want some summer shine products, yep. summer shine, some other goodies in there. Uh, let's see. We have a uh, winch. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to go on to the other giveaway? We have another giveaway. I do. You do. I do. Oh, what's your giveaway? I got a birthday present for you. Oh, let's do the winch. Birthday presents are boring. Yeah. <laughs> Winches are exciting. I love winches. All right. <laughs> Unless you got me a winch, then we can go to the birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got this rough country winch. Sweet. <laughs> just pulled it off the shelf. 9,500 pound rough country yeah. winch. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, uh, yeah. So we've been this whole freaking time. I think there was some episode where I was drunk and we were talking and about here we are drinking again. Here we are. I'm borderline drunk again. Cause that was a lot of whiskey. Um, and, um, we are, I kind of joked around about doing a winch as a giveaway, like, and I was like, 
Hey, we should do something fun for 500 reviews. And in my head, I was thinking we're never getting to 500 reviews. I got a witch. Let's give away the witch. Ha ha ha. Cause we're never going to give it away. Blah, blah, blah. And we're at 514 reviews, Jimmy. 514. How, what has it been a week or two since we said we were at 497? Uh, yeah, about a week and, and a half. Yeah. All of a sudden we got bombarded mm -hmm. with people's entries. Yep. So we had three open spots and we had about 17 people sign up. Yeah, yep. So yeah. uh, we've been saying it for a long time. Mm -hmm. If you're not signed up by 500, you're not getting entered. So there's nope. 14 people, 13 people that missed out. They missed out on the winch, but you might get in for the next one. Yes, we are so. in discussions. There mm -hmm. will be another one. We are working on getting a very good prize. Yep. I don't want to disclose what it is because just in case it doesn't work out, <laughs> but we're aiming for 750 this time. Mm -hmm. so 750 total. 750 so. total. So if you want to, the 14 that missed out on the winch, you guys are going to be entered into the next giveaway mm -hmm. and uh, just get ready. So if you guys can figure out how to do more reviews and <laughs> yep. put more reviews in there, uh, you got until 750 when we do another big giveaway. Yep. And uh, so I... I, I really kind of need the winch, the rough country, 9,500 pound winch. <laughs> and the 750 giveaway is something else I could really use if we, yep. if we can make if it work. If we can make it work, yes. <laughs> so it uh, is now. Whatever. All right. So let's right. see. So we did two. We did two. We did a main and a backup. Yes. In case it's six string trucker and they don't get back to us again. Or red rocket hot pocket oh, right. doesn't yeah. ever get back to us again mm -hmm. for your guys' uh, swag packs. Yep. So who was the winner? What number was the winner? It was number 411. Number 411. Tyler went to the random number generator mm -hmm. and he was like tapping the button. Tell me when to stop. He's like, tell me when to stop. And I and sat there 20 for like, minutes later. Yeah, Jimmy finally said stop. Really long time. <laughs> Uh, and it landed on number 411. Mm -hmm. Who, what was their username? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Username is already taken. 69420. <laughs> Serious? Serious? Yeah. Username is already taken. 69420. 69, I wonder if that's their area code. That's, that sounds like a pretty good zip code, a 69420. I, I think that's a good zip code. That would be a funny zip code. What is that zip code? Hold on. Now I'm gonna now I'm got me curious. Is it really a zip code? Is it somewhere actually? Uh, po <laughs> postal code in Kentucky. How funny. For huh? Yuku Yukuyachi? No, you, Mexico. What? That's Mexico zip code, postal code. I don't How'd you go from Kentucky to Mexico? That was a Reddit post. Um it doesn't 69420. It doesn't say. I don't think it is one. There isn't an area code. I don't think so. The only thing that keeps coming up is uh Santiago Yukuyachi, uh, Mexico. Huh. Maybe uh, they don't have the humor like we do up here. Maybe. Maybe it's the DMV that controls uh, postal codes because the DMV Maybe. won't let you have fun stuff like that on your license plate either. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Anyways. username already taken 69420. Yes. You are the grand prize winner. Mm -hmm. We are going to hold on to that. How long should we hold on to that before we give it to second place. We'll hold on to it for a while. We'll figure We'll give you a fair you chance. Like two months. Two months. So the end of after Memorial day. Sounds good. Okay. So after Memorial day, we have a backup winner. We do. Uh, and the backup winner will give you something as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but backup winner, it might just be a blue oval. Cause we don't want those in the studio anymore. Uh, yeah. Though no, we will give you something <laughs> <laughs> it might not be as good as a winch, but so who was our backup winner? Our what was that number? Backup winner was number 40, yes. four zero. Four zero. Okay. So and somebody very early. Yep. And it was Joe Z. Joe Z. Yep. yep. Joe Z. Like J O E Z. Okay. Six zero four two one. That has to be a zip code. <laughs> I was going to say he's <laughs> only one day after 420. I know, right? Uh, Elwood, Illinois. Elwood, Illinois. Yeah. Okay. So right now you're next to Rockdale. Got Illinois. it. Okay. So Joe Z mm -hmm. six zero four two one. Yep. So, um, Joe's Joe Z six zero four two one. Uh, the review was thoroughly enjoy five stars. Thoroughly enjoy these guys on my commute to and from work. Some days I am in the car as long as four hours and these guys along with their sister podcasts are great. Awesome. Thanks. 
So, okay. What did username already taken say? He said, he or she said off-road stuff, five stars. Nice to listen to four by four topics while I'm building my ship box or working. So there you go. They got a Jeep. They probably have a Cherokee. Yeah. Chicory. Uh, can we swap it then and make, make Joe, Joe, Joe Z, Z the, the winner. ultimate winner? <laughs> yeah. Just, we need to know what vehicle you guys are driving. Yeah. Uh, if you can <laughs> let us know, that may determine who yeah. actually wins. We'll give extra credit to Toyotas. <laughs> okay. So All cool. Right. We finally got to 500 reviews. Got to finally give away this winch almost four years. Well, we're probably three years into doing something it. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I pulled the winch down off of the pallet racking, uh, the other day. So it's now sitting here in the shop, just waiting for one of, uh, you two, I guess the username is already taken six, nine, four, 20 to claim it. And then if he doesn't claim it by Memorial day, Josie, it's all yours. Yeah. And Josie, feel free to reach out to us if you, uh, if you hear this before then. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we just connect some dots. Yep. We do have another giveaway. We do. Yes. Okay. We have March's giveaway, which we oh, totally skipped right. over as we well. Did. It's okay. a good thing I wrote it down. We probably would have completely missed it. We would have. But anyways, for the <laughs> yeah, for the winch giveaway, please get in contact with us. We will ask you some questions to prove who you are, mm-hmm. and um, we'll go from there. But monthly giveaway for the Devo Slight Ranger, we did that giveaway as well. Mm-hmm. And the lucky winner <laughs> is... I feel like someone's going to think this one's rigged. It's a Will Richardson. Probably. Will Richardson. <laughs> our buddy over at Metal Cloak. Our friend over just yonder. Will mm-hmm. Richardson. Uh, he congratulations. Drives a Jeep too. He does drive a Jeep too. So can we do it again? So how will we only give him half of it? Okay, that'll work. Okay. We'll give him the poll. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, will you get the slam steak? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sort of like funny. a shake weight. Yeah. Will. Just think of that. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Congrats, Will. Um, uh, we'll reach out to you, buddy, and we'll get that over to you. So yeah, and you look good with your shaven face, by the way. Mm-hmm. Even though you are cold and naked. So yes. Oh man, any other giveaways we're missing uh, here? I don't know. Should we give uh, give away the blue oval while we're at it? Yeah, hey, sure. Ben, you won. <laughs> Chris, Chris Mains, <laughs> yeah. winner of the blue oval. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Put would, that up in your garage, Chris. There you go. <laughs> Next to his uh, favorite water pump gasket. Yeah. <laughs> his favorite Toyota part. I wonder if he threw that away. I'm sure he threw that away. Yeah, probably. He didn't like my humor on our text thread the other day. I don't. Oh, the, you're uh, the double. Uh, the double hitch, hitch receiver. receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Loser. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. So. Okay. You what wanna, else we got? You want to open your present? I Happy birthday, so, birthday yeah. boy! Let me uh, close down the lappy toppy. Pull out the kniff. All right, let's see what we got. This is the cake cutting kniff too. Use that knife to cut the cake. That the yeah. MFing employees got him. Then I licked it clean. Uh, airbag, airbag, uh, paper, paper, universal headphones case. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and new headphones. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. And what is this? A padded cradle with channel to hold headphones securely in place. Oh, wait, what? It's like you could attach it to this uh, our uh, coffee table. Like so you can hang them on when I'm not using them. Hang them so you don't use them. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I think we so, should uh, throw in the elevator music and you can try these new puppies out. Yeah, let's get these plugged in. All right. Test. Oh, hey. That's a lot different sounding. <laughs> a little better but <laughs> well if that way is a little better that's the way it is whoa your voice is a lot deeper now <laughs> is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh this will be fun okay now i get to I, I get different sounds in my head now there you go good yeah Man, yeah now, now i can i'm gonna try and talk lower all the time now now i can hear your bass exactly <laughs> Thank you, man. You're welcome. So yeah, you're going to stop making fun of my headphones now? Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> for the most part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, when was it? We were recording in studio with some, was it with Trent and Justin? Maybe. And I, I think I was forced to use uh, not, one of the, not my head, normal headphones. Yeah. Cause I upgraded headphones a long time ago. You've got like these are super fancy. Like, are they bows? What are those? These are roads. Roads. That's yeah, it's it. the same thing as the Christmas tree board. That's what that symbol and is. And okay. I had to use our old headphones that we've, we bought originally when we started podcasting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, these things suck. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear so much more with, uh, my newer headphones, my nice headphones. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, these are okay. So I'm like, I'm going to buy you headphones for your birthday. (laughs) And here we are on your birthday. You got some nice new headphones. Mm -hmm. You got some Sennheisers. They are Sennheisers. Which is a very nice company. a fancy one, yeah. A bougie company. Yes. The HD 25s. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Nice. So they're... uh, I did a little bit of research. I can't even read half of the box because it's in another language. German. Is that what that is? German? I don't know. Yeah. I've seen Sennheiser. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I did a little bit of research on like best podcast headphones. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, this one on a bunch of forms, this one was rated pretty high. Nice. So yeah. So congratulations. Cool. Thank you, sir. Welcome to actually officially listening to me for once. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I like listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yep. Moving up in the world. I am I'm getting fancy. We're getting fancy here in the studio. So, uh, I also got a little Aflac duck today. You did. Mm-hmm. Your rep came in. Yeah. My our rep came in and, uh, he said, if I, if I squeeze it, uh, he shows up, it's like magic genie trick. So oh, yeah. we'll, we'll avoid squeezing it for now. We'll try that later. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, after I'm drunk enough and I you know, like smash my hand in a door, then we'll, we'll squeeze the half like duck and have the rep come down. Yeah. <laughs> Take me to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, well, cool, man. All right. Lots of fun updates for today. Um, yeah. let's see. We've That's got like a half an hour of giveaways right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. So, uh, let's see. What else have we been up to? We've been, uh, you got to do some fun things. I have, uh, I got to do, I think some fun things. Probably getting ready for Moab. Uh, so what did you get to do? Let's see. I don't, where did I leave off? Do you recall? Mm, having a beer after clearing the backyard, I believe. And then for Bobcat, you left off um, planning on, uh, you got in like two different Pittman arms or something like that. And okay. um, you were, test fitting the steering box and finding that the fitting was going into the radiator support. It was too far forward. Correct. Okay. Thank you for uh, bringing me up to speed. Yeah. Back to reality. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, once the, f- the output for the hydraulic line, once we found out that that was not in the most ideal spot, mm-hmm. we figured that, okay, what I really need to do is I need to relocate that. Mm-hmm. And we also, well, Hussman, I'm saying we, because the Hussman was over. Uh, we also play. You don't have split personalities. No, like we all thought. Sometimes, yeah. maybe. <laughs> okay. Us might. <laughs> yeah. We, okay. <laughs> uh, we also played with the stock pitman arm versus the flat pitman arm mm-hmm. that I got from uh, Trail Gear, and uh, we it just wasn't very definitive whether I should tilt the power steering box somewhat in the stock position, which aligns the steering shaft up to the steering wheel in a okay, decent line. That's right. Mm-hmm. Or if I should crank it completely like perpendicular to the ground, mm-hmm. which makes that angle really, really tight. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I would use the flat pitman arm in that case. Okay. And so I ended up buying a three quarter inch drop pitman arm from skies off road mm-hmm. as well. And that one is three eighths shorter than the stock pitman arm. Okay. So I, in the meantime, while I was waiting for that pitman arm to show up, I, um, Hussman came back over one day and he supervised me while I drilled and tapped the power steering box. Nice. Yeah. Which wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. Okay. For some reason. And I think it's just one of those things. It's like, there's a mechanical thing going on in the inside of this. I don't want ever want to tear it apart. Yeah. You know, it's that way with transmissions and uh-huh. T cases and a steering box. 
where the steering box came apart, like there's eight bolts and it pretty much pops apart. <laughs> nice. And I bought a, uh, a seal kit for it. So we ripped out a whole bunch of seals and uh, uh, some gaskets and some Teflon rings and replaced them all. The only thing I did not dive into is there is a part of the power steering box, the input side that is on a bunch of ball bearings. And the uh. video I watched was like, don't take this apart. It is near impossible <laughs> to replace all the ball bearings. Okay. And when I talked about it online on Instagram, a lot of these things are uh, more timely on Instagram. If you want to keep up to date on that. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, did you tear that section apart? It was a bitch to put all those ball bearings back in. I was like, no, <laughs> I just left that part alone. Mm -hmm. I tore the whole rest of the box apart. It really comes out in like two pieces. Yeah. And uh, it was really easy from there. And then measuring over and finding a few spots was fairly simple after following um, some instructions online. Mm -hmm. One of the guys had this string trick because the hard tap to hit or the hard one to drill and hit is the vein that's along the top side. Okay. I don't know whether that pushes right or left, but there's this vein on the top and it's just a canal along underneath, you know, inside the metal mm -hmm. that you have to drill down into and you have to hit it as dead center as possible. <laughs> and how, you can't, big, how big is the vein? It's three. Let's say three eighths quarter inch. Three eighths. Okay. I think, I think it's three eighths. Okay. Or right around there. So you got to hit this three eighths vein in the top of a steering box. Yeah. Okay. And uh, which doesn't sound hard, but it's hard to hit as center as possible. Mm -hmm. And some guy said, uh, you know, shove a string in there and then like stick like a rat tail file inside of that to hold it in place and then lay the string over the top. And now you got a straight line from edge to edge. Uh, and then you know where the center for the most part yeah. is. Then I used a center punch there and then drilled out. Like, I think I drilled out at an eighth of an inch and then maybe a quarter inch and then, you know, stepped it up to, I think we step it up to seven sixteenths. Okay. When we start tapping. So that after watching that, that video and seeing how he did it, the whole rest of the uh, tapping side went super easy. Nice. Um, did you get I, very many uh, metal flakes down inside at all that you had to clean out? Or Yeah, there was yeah. metal flakes, but the whole thing was gutted. Yeah. So minus some of the needle bearings that were in there, but I shoved paper towels down on the inside as well. So I tried to shake it out as much as possible and then pull the paper towels out. Nice. But I still cleaned. I still used some carb cleaner, sprayed it all out, wiped it out as much as possible. The You have to clean as much of that channel, that vein out as possible and... I had a like a pick mm -hmm. that fit in almost all the way to the far end. Mm -hmm. And then I stuck a magnet on it. Oh, and then yeah. so I magnetized the pick oh, and cool. I was able to like pull out all those files as well. Yeah. I spent a long time cleaning that nice. I spent like <laughs> as long as it took me to tap it. I probably spent that cleaning the whole thing just because nice. I didn't want any metal flakes in there. Yeah. And then putting it back together for the most part was pretty simple. We replaced the seal on the bottom and the, uh, there was a lot of like rubber owings that then had a Teflon separate ring on the inside of it. So yeah. it was just kind of interesting. So it has this uh, oil prevention area mm -hmm. and a slip like the Teflon must be for, you know, things are sliding against it. So, yeah, it's just yeah. was kind of an easy or is an interesting setup, something I've never yeah. come across. But Putting it back together was simple. I mean, it was just slide more or less slide this one in and then center it and then slide the the output shaft in and then you're pretty much Put done. Put the bolts back in. Put yeah. the bolts back in, the eight bolts, and you're done. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that worked out really well. And so we did that one day. And then a few days later, um, husband came over again. And I, uh, I'll admit it, I fucked up that day. <laughs> I the, when, the couple I was, days next when he came over or the yeah, steering box? No, the day? couple days ago. Okay. Well, we both screwed up on the power steering box, but I remembered there was an O-ring that we had forgotten, completely forgotten to put in. Oh, no. And I took the power steering box apart ever so. You only need, I only needed to pull like this one section off barely and mm -hmm. I could put an O-ring back in. So I remembered that. But yeah, the next day when we were going to start putting the power steering box onto the frame, mm -hmm. I screwed up. I... Um, what was the first group? So we set up my welder. We bought, the, oh. I got gas regulator, wire, additional tips. Um, <laughs> I got everything tips. ready to MIG weld with the yes welder that we bought in 
2020. I want to say we ordered it in like 19. It came in in late 2020 or yeah. something. Yeah. So I finally am hooking that up. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did all that, um, which it was more expensive than I thought. Hmm. It was a, like $600. Wow. For the, I had to buy a tank. Uh, or rent the tank yeah, or whatever the bottle it is. Itself yeah, the, the actual gas. bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, pay for the gas, pay for wire, buy the regulators, buy the hose for the regulator, which it, they came with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I bought tips and then I don't think I bought anything else, but I was like, damn. And I bought a big, uh, like a hundred. Yeah, you bought the big bottle. I bought the big <laughs> bottle. <laughs> yeah. Because Husband was with me. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so uh, we set up the welder because when I cut off the bracketry on the frame, I actually gouged the frame in a few spots. So I wanted to weld those closed, okay. grind them smooth. And my batteries for my lens on my helmet was, or hood or helmet, hood, hood. hood was yep. dead. Uh-oh. Wah, wah. And so I couldn't weld. <laughs> and at, right at that point, actually, uh, first gen Dave showed up. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, Dave," and he's like, "Hey," I'm did like, "Did you happen to bring a hood with you? Did you happen to bring <laughs> some two twenty or twenty four fifty batteries with you?" Yeah. He's like, "You guys need batteries?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "You want to run to the store?" <laughs> like, sure. So he ran to Rayleigh's and they didn't have it, and then he ran to Ace and they had it. Okay. So he uh, ended up coming back with batteries. Thank you, Dave. Mm-hmm. And then um, before that day, uh, earlier that day, I went to Ace, the same Ace probably, and. I went trying to find a three quarter inch hole saw bit. Okay. Because I need to cut some decent sized holes in the frame Mm -hmm. for the bolts to go through. And they didn't have any. And, Mm. but they had three quarter inch drill bits. Wow. They had three quarter inch drill. Oh, I guess three quarter inch isn't too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. So, but it was like $35 for a drill bit or something. I was like, I have a hole, I have a step bit. Okay. And I know the step bit gets up, <laughs> gets that up three far, quarter inch. Right. Yeah, so yeah. that'll come into play a little later. So when, so we got, I took the box, we took the frames, we started setting it up and playing with different positions of, for the flat pitman arm. Or at this point I received the three quarter inch drop pitman arm or the stock pitman arm. And really what we found is we found a really good spot where everything fits like really well, the power steering box is not hitting the core support for the radiator, the body mount, or anything else in the way. Nice. The hydraulic line comes out in a smooth spot, and the line for my power or for the steering shaft up to the steering wheel is at a is at a good angle. Nice. And that is with the three quarter inch drop pitman arm. Okay. So I'm gonna try that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna see how the steering goes. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure how to measure the steering from stock to this. Yeah. It m- might be because I don't, I feel that my, the hydraulic ram I had was pushing through my steering stops anyway. Okay. So I think even if it does shorten my steering, I think what I'm going to look for is do my wheels still hit stop to stop? Mm-hmm. And if they do, I'm going to be happy. You're going to be happy. And you can build your drag link to accommodate as long as they're going stop to stop. So, yes. Yeah. So that's, I'm just going to call, I'm going to stick with that. I've, we've already marked it. I've drilled a few holes, but when I got to the point where I needed to drill up to three quarters of an inch, I went and grabbed my step bit Mm -hmm. and that thing is dull as fuck. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So I couldn't uh, finish. I couldn't finish. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) Uh, So, and I needed to fully, for the most part, I needed to really fully drill out this hole because uh, the other hole that was going through the frame, there's another h- hole in that that's near it. Okay. That once I get, I drilled like a one eighth inch hole. Mm-hmm. And if I go any larger, it's going to veer into that other hole. Yeah. So I've got, don't that, veer into, other don't holes, go, Jimmy. don't veer into <laughs> other holes. Exactly. Um, how long did it take you to learn that life lesson? <laughs> I don't think I've learned it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still will, willing to try it out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah. So I've got to, I need a three quarter inch bit. I need to finish reaming mm. that hole out. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. And then I can piece, put together the bracket mm-hmm. and then I can use 
<laughs> it's just this is gonna get bad. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Okay. I can use the other the bracket the whole of the other bracket as a guide. Okay. So that it won't veer away and I can straight shoot it from bracket hole to bracket hole. I have no clue what we're talking about anymore. <laughs> Did you really lose me or do you, is just your mind on uh, the other side? My, my mind is wandering all over the place right now. Yeah. I think that anybody who's paying attention and whose mind doesn't wander yeah. should be able to follow that. So <laughs> basically is I need to set the bracket up and use the bracket hole as a guide. Gotcha. See, why don't you just say that? Because I wanted your mind to keep going. Okay. I was like, how many other ways can I screw Tyler up right now? Uh, so okay. that's where Bobcat sit. I was really hoping to have the bracket like tacked in place and either the holes drilled or me just ready to start welding by the, by this point. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, because of my screw ups, I didn't buy the three quarter inch bit. Mm -hmm. And because I, my battery, my batteries on the welding hood were done, I wasn't able to do two of the steps that I needed to uh, get done. Yeah. So I'm now kind of like, shit, I need, <laughs> I need more free time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's where Bobcat currently sits. Well, you still have, I have a, from now about a week and a half, maybe yeah, I have about a week, a week and a half. Um, what still do you have left to do then? You've got to get the, the hole drilled. Um, bracket welded on. I got it. Yeah. I got to finish drilling one hole and I got to drill the second hole and then I got to weld it all in and I need to, so I'm moving the steering box so far forward that now my steering rod is not long enough to reach my steering wheel. You drag oh, the column. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm either going to, I'm going to probably try to grind cause I, ex I, I extended it already once, uh, -huh. uh like a, almost maybe half a year ago, six mm -hmm. months ago. So I'm going to try to grind that off and see if I can just pull it out another inch and okay. see if I can reweld it. We'll see how that goes. Or I just cut it and sleeve it again. Yeah. Or I go grab one off of Becky and see if that fits. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of what I did on my steering column, which is the Borgeson uh, steering shaft um, and the U-joint instead of the rag joint. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that that option a lot. So, can I get it in a week? <sighs> Talk to our buddy at um, RKQ. Oh, yeah. Um, he was able to. I don't know if they have him in a week, but I, he got him to me fairly quickly. Okay, but yeah, I'll see. I mean, anything right mm. now for me, it's anything that I don't have to fab. I'm trying to just get. Yeah, because I, I'm feeling the pressure now. Yeah, I'm trying to get this done because I wanted to get this or parking brakes on mm -hmm. and I was working on that mm -hmm. and I got the Ranchero parking brakes and everything to start setting up, but I don't think I'm going to have time to get the e-brakes going. And that was like one of the things that I really wanted to do. We can still do what our original plan was for last year. If you need to have the, the parking brake pull your brake pedal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe I think mm -hmm. I'd still be able to drive through that. Anybody, w I mean, you I think drive, I just might stall it on purpose. Just stalled on purpose. Just yeah. let the clutch out real quick. And yeah. Because so, their rule is in second gear, you you have to be able to stall the vehicle out in second gear. And I'm like, well, I can do that. Just pop the clutch out real quick in second gear. Yeah, but I they might see the vehicle lurch. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm gonna have to figure something out. Um, I think I said at one point that when I was working, I went over to Dave's house to help him figure out something with his truck. Mm -hmm. And um, I stole his uh, reverse light indicator oh, uh -huh. off of his <laughs> transmission because it had wires and uh -huh. mine didn't. And you said the same thing. Yours didn't have wires my either. My four by four doesn't have wires. Oh, your four by four. So yeah, yeah mine's my reverse light indicator. Mm -hmm. And so I... Uh, I just need to connect the wires now is all I need to do on that one. So that one's done. So I had three things I really wanted to get done. I wanted mm -hmm. to fix the steering. I wanted to uh, make sure that it went, the reverse lights went on and I wanted to get e-brakes. Okay. And it looks like at this point in time, I probably will get the reverse lights working mm -hmm. and maybe the steering fixed, but the e-brakes are a maybe. Mm. All right. But I am going to try, we're recording on a Thursday. I, don't have an immense amount of plans for Friday, tomorrow, and Saturday. I'm going to try and work on it all day. So I do have, I think I have two days here coming up. Okay. But it's really hard to get a job done when you only have a few hours once a week to, to work on it. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. what that's the Bobcat woes for right now. Okay. Hopefully uh Bobcat's ready to go mm-hmm. or I'm taking the Tacoma. Yeah. And doing other do, doing do everything that the, bro- <laughs> the Broncos doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going rusty nail in the Tacoma, that'd be funny. No. No. <laughs> uh yeah, we'll see. Um yeah, I've been uh working on not my axle. So I went and had that meeting with uh, Ori Yeah. and after talking, him and his buddy were talking about their current workload and what they need to do with me. <sighs> they don't think they can get me in until the beginning of June to wow. do the suspension. Okay. So, um, I was like, all right, well, I'm not really in a rush now. <laughs> no. I've got two months now before we're going to get the suspension done. So, um, I ended up getting, uh, and sending in the side gears, the Tundra side gears from the, the carrier okay. to Brannick. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And I put a note in there that said, Hey guys, it's me. The guy that's doing the stupid thing with my axle. Um, here's your Tundra side gears. Give me a call when you get these. So I'm just waiting for them to call me now, uh, to talk about the custom shaft length. Yes. And cutting them. Um, and then I have not put the C's on the axle housing yet. So what I did instead was uh i've been accumulating parts for the park the parking trailer the camping trailer uh over the what, winter time what, here. Did, what did we call that in a future episode uh expeditioning no not no. um base camping base camping yeah trailer. the base camping trailer uh <laughs> so yes yeah, the base camp trailer so i've been accumulating parts over winter time because there was uh the next kind of phase of the trailer i wanted to get done was um the electrical. I wanted to get the electrical, the infrastructure fully set up for the electrical system because what I want to do with the trailer is make it completely um, off grid sustainable. So I don't have to run propane at all and have to worry about going and refilling propane bottles anywhere. So that means I need everything to run on electricity and be able to recharge it um, anywhere <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. So well, um, anywhere that there's sun, uh, not necessarily that anywhere. And Okay. So, uh, what oh. I did, yeah, what did you do? Um, I have, uh, two lithium batteries. One is a 200 amp hour, uh, battery from Renogy. And another one is a hundred amp hour battery from Battleborn. And, uh, I wired those parallel together. So it's a 12 volt system and I have 300 amp hours of, uh, lithium batteries in the trailer. The cool thing is that the Renogy battery has a Bluetooth BMS battery management system to it. So I can check everything associated with the batteries because they're connected together in 12 volt. I can check how full they are, how full the system is, how many hours remaining because the battery, the BMS kind of calculates all that as you're using the the power. You can't check each battery individually, but it's, uh, you can check the total for the most part. Yeah. It's sort of like your tires, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. With a Morflate. Exactly. It's, it's equalizing the system. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Like how I threw that in there. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I'll give you 20 bucks later. All right. <laughs> I'll Venmo you right now. Uh, so anyways, um, I'll give you that up. one. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyways, got those hooked up. And so I'm like, cool. I've got 300 amp hours of battery now. Okay. So now I need to find ways to charge those batteries as I deplete them. And so uh, one way, obviously solar. Um, and so I have a commercial solar panel that is 36 to 44 volts. Wow. So I think it's technically a, a quote unquote, a 36 volt panel, but, um, 36 volt panels typically run 40, 41 volts under full voltage. So there's a nominal voltage range there. Right. Um, and so I got that for free. Um, I did a, a product for free. I did a product trade kind of thing um, with uh, Dave McKinney. Yeah. Got him some more flight stuff. And he has a buddy that is commercial solar. <laughs> got me a commercial solar panel. So I got this 36 volt uh, solar panel that uh, does uh, 370 watts of power, something like that. And so it's about 10 amps, roughly a uh, 10 amp panel. The problem with that is uh, any most solar uh, uh, systems run, you know, 36 volt and they'll run everything together to, uh, hook things up in series and up the voltage on things. 
so that uh, when you finally go and use the power from your system, then it gets knocked down to 12 volts or ramped up to 120 volts, some of the charge and AC system. So 36 volt does not typically play very well with what we have to use in consumer vehicular 12 volt systems. And in order to get a solar controller that works with that converting from a 36 volt to 12 volt, you have to go into commercial solar controllers. (laughs) Oh, interesting. Okay. So because it's so many volts, it's a big jump in the voltage. Yeah, it's not yeah. a standard house mm-hmm. plug in the wall scenario. Yeah. Okay. Like if it was a 24 volt or a 12 volt uh, solar panel system, then it would have been worked just fine. And you've had a lot of consumer options that are relatively inexpensive. But since I'm going from 36 volt to 12 volt, I have to get a commercial solar controller, which is like 350 bucks. <laughs> Ugh, dang. <laughs> so uh, save some money on the solar panel, but that made me get a really expensive controller. Um, but I'm happy in the end that I got a really expensive controller uh, because I got um, I ended up with a Renogy one, and um, I ended up there after uh, foo barring some other stuff. <laughs> Is, so, was Renogy the same as your battery? Yes. Okay. Yep. So battery batteries are Renogy, and yep. the controllers are Renogy. Yeah. So I had gotten. I tried to find a you know uh, an Amazon special 36 to 12 volt controller. And I got it and it didn't work properly. So what it did was it sensed that the battery needed 12 volts when the battery was needing a charge and um, it would bring the, you know, 41 volts in from the solar and then convert it down to 12 volts for the batteries. But the problem was is lithium batteries because they run a battery management system. The BMS will shut off charging to the battery once the battery is full. I don't understand the problem. Um, The problem is that once the battery kind of gets shut off from being able to take any more charge, this solar charge controller no longer could sense what voltage the batteries needed. Oh, and so it's saying battery's empty. No, it just said battery is not there. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then it would just pump 41 volts through the system. Interesting. And so I had a... um, with uh, you know, the battery management system, the BMS is being smart and shutting themselves off to save the, each, themselves. Um, I had other things hooked up to the electrical system, like a 2000 watt inverter that got fried. I got fried yeah. because okay. it was taking a 41 volt input. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I foobarred, regulators. Yeah. I foobarred the, uh, the inverter and, um, after that, I was like, well, this controller is not going to work. So I ended up with this really nice, expensive Renogy one, which I'm actually really happy with because it's also Bluetooth controlled and Renogy oh. has an app to kind of control all their devices. Oh, nice. As long so, as you have power. As long as you have power in your battery. Right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, this... Uh, or your phone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the controller then... Uh, reads me and tells me how much power I've generated through the solar panels which is kind of cool. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll tell me over time, you know, how much power I generated last month or something. Um, so that once I got the Renogy controller hooked up, everything's working good. Everything's working fine. Um, and then to, so that's the solar charging. So now what happens if I don't have solar, I don't have sun to charge me. So it's cloudy outside, stormy, whatever it is. You have a weather vane thing. No, I've got a, a DC to DC charger from wagon tech. Ah, Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then I wired that into the trailer's 12 volt pin on the seven pin uh, trailer harness. Okay. So you can charge off the alternator of whatever vehicle vehicle that you're towing is being towing the trailer. Exactly. So whenever I have the trailer hooked up to a vehicle, that power is getting fed through the DC to DC charger. That's putting it out at 10 amps to the batteries. Um, and whenever there's sun out, the solar controller is pumping 10 to 15 amps into the batteries as well. So I've got about 20 to 25 amps worth of charging in the batteries. And at 300 amp hours, that gives me 15 hours to completely charge the batteries <laughs> wow. if I run everything all at once. Yeah. But like, I've really got to be running to work uh, and the 300 amp hours down all the way. Right. Right. So how does the DC to DC work? Is it 
you said you hooked it into your seven pin. Mm -hmm. Is it on the seven pin on the trailer? Mm -hmm. And it there's a a lead that takes power. Yep, it's a twelve volt. It's the twelve volt pin on the trailer, and it's typically the wire that you hook up your trailer brake batteries to, so that your trailer brake batteries stay charged. So they're pulling the power and the draw off of that that twelve volt pin on your seven pin. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then so it's taking the the power from that and then using that power to charge batteries. Mm-hmm. It's changing it from DC to DC. Yep. And what it does, it just controls the uh, amperage so that it gives you a safe level amperage. There's no surge in power spikes or anything coming from the alternator. Um, it just makes it really safe to pump the power from the vehicle into your lithium batteries. Got it. Yeah. I was, my mind was wandering ever so slightly when you were talking about that. Cause it got me thinking about if it, it might be a stupid idea, but it got me thinking about doing that, a DC to DC on the trailer that you ho- then plug into the vehicle that you're towing and it acts as sort of a trickle charge. Yeah. Onto batteries. Mm-hmm. You can you, you can set the, you can set the DC to DC charger to do that as well. I just have mine set to um, essentially as a float charge, so it'll it'll float and charge for however long, and then it'll check voltage and see mm-hmm. if it needs to keep going or if it can stop and do a trickle. Then oh, interesting. That's yeah. cool. It's a pretty cool yeah. little uh, DC to DC charger that wagon. Yeah, came wagon out. tech asked me if they're like. How do you do your dual battery system? And I said, I have a Wagon Tech lithium uh, <laughs> cube. Uh-huh. And they're like, Oh, you don't have two batteries in your vehicle? I'm like, No, well, I don't care. I have not two, two bat- in the engine bay. Yeah, not two in the engine bay. I have your guys' lithium cube that I use as my second battery. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, but yeah, their, their setup sounds pretty slick. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's, I mean, it's, if you're going to run, multiple batteries and charge off of them. That's, that's the safe way to do it is run a DC to DC charger on them. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and then I bought two electric burners. Okay. That draw mm-hmm. about a thousand Watts each. Did you do a long time ago? We were talking about two different versions. Yes. Did you do that? You bought the both versions? I did not. Okay. I bought two infrareds. Okay. Yeah. So there's uh, I was going back and forth between induction and infrared. Right. If anybody is curious about that conversation, we did a whole episode on it. I don't remember which episode it was. I'll see if I can find it and throw it down in the okay. show notes. Um, and so the essentially induction is more efficient if you're heating up water and infrared is more efficient if you're heating up solid items. So um, uh, more, more efficient power consumption, I should say. So I got two infrareds. They burn at about a thousand Watts a piece. My inverter is a 2000 watt inverter. So, um, I should probably have like a 2,500 watt just to be safe, but I ran both of them at the same time and it worked just fine. Okay. Um, and, uh, didn't burn anything down yet. Not yet. So (laughs) we'll see how it goes, (laughs) but yeah, got it all set up and running and, uh, we ended up staining and lacquering, um, the whole kitchen area. Oh, okay. So now uh, I don't have to worry about, you know, dripping taco sauce on the wood and have it staining in there. Yeah. Yeah. Have you vented that area out since you've stained it? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, man, you're going to go sleep in that soon. Yep. It's going to smell like stain in there all night long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got a heated mattress pad too. Oh, cool. And I got the lights set up under the awning for the Iron Man four by four awning. Nice. And those lights are actually pretty neat. They're uh they're diffused really well. And so they're not super bright in your eyes and they have three different colors. It's white, yellow and orange that you can change the color on in the lights. Interesting. I wonder yeah. why yellow. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of the yellow. Like the white and the orange I could yeah. see working well. But So I all, all I know from all my overlanding friends is that the yellow orange spectrum mm-hmm insects aren't attracted to. Oh, I didn't know that. And so they're attracted to a white light, but they Mm -hmm. aren't attracted to a yellow orange spectrum. Huh? So if like you're out camping and you have the white light on, Mm -hmm. all the insects fly to the white light and like, you know, keep repeatedly hitting the bulb or whatever. (laughs) But if you run an orange color, Mm -hmm. they they don't do that. It's just like normal. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That'll be nice to play around with, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So, um, speaking of bugs, the last thing that we wanted to try and get done before was a screen 
a bug screen out the back so we can have the back door open, um, okay. but not get a bunch of bugs in yeah. inside the trailer. Yeah, sure. Does it have a window on it? Um, there's a window on each side, and then the door has a door and a screen door. Okay. To the little human door. Oh, but you wanted a screen for the kitchen. Yeah. That way we can have the kitchen back door all the way open and right. not get bugs. From the, the roof down to the bar, mm-hmm. more or less. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so you're just going to get met some mesh in there and fill yeah. that up? Yep. Smart. Pretty much. So yeah, that's the uh, that's where the trailer is at right now. The next okay. step um, from it, now that the electrical infrastructure is there, I'm actually looking at putting in a Bluetooth CAN bus switch panel. For so what? for the trailer, for all the lights, for and- that's to trigger stuff. Yeah, because if you get in the man door, the interior lights are located back at the bar in the kitchen. So you have to crawl through the trailer to hit the light switch to get the lights to come on inside mm. if you want the interior lights to come on. So there's going to be some uses for, you know, turning that on. That way we can have the mosquito net down the whole thing and then like use the phone to trigger yeah. the exterior lights or something. Right. That'd be cool. Yeah. So I'm looking at possibly doing that. Um, the next step as well is putting a shower into it. And I have the heating element and the thermo controller for it. Um, I just need to get a figure out what I want to do for a tank. I think what I'm going to do is get some like eight inch PVC tube and get like seven feet of it. <laughs> uh, go on to Iron Man four by four. Uh huh. And they have water tanks. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Look, they have. <laughs> well, I'm not the, used to the overlanding world and yeah. what companies make stuff. And yeah. I need to remember Iron Man four by four has like everything. They had one. I was looking at one for a little while that. They have one and it might work perfect for you. It didn't work nearly. It wasn't what I was looking for, but it was only like a few inches deep, but it was really long Mm -hmm. and you might be able to store it underneath the trailer. Oh, keep the weight down a little low. That would be nice. But it was because it was, it was long fair. It was, I don't, don't quote me on these numbers. It was like five feet long, four inches thick and two feet wide. Okay. Right. Which doesn't like, isn't very like large, but the volume is there mm-hmm. because it's so long. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I'll have to look into that because there is space under the trailer to make use of a, between the, the floor, the trailer and the axle. Yeah. So yeah. And the trailer, like, we're not looking at articulation or <laughs> no. uh, how much, you know, flex you're getting or no, you and know, I'm how, not going to be taking it off roading and putting it in weird situations. So. Right. Yeah. So there might be a, there might be a tank there that would work yeah. for you from Iron Man four by four. Interesting. Okay. I'll have to look into that more now. Yeah. Or some black tubes under there would probably work too. That's true. I like the idea of keeping that weight down lower rather than putting it up on top. Yeah. The problem with putting it up on, or the reason people put it up on top is then they get the gravity feed for a shower. So if you have it down low, you need some sort of pump. I already have a pump in there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, cool, man. Um, that's the next stages for the trailer and, uh, my hitch works great on the Bronco. Screw everybody. <laughs> you needed that double penetration one that Chris showed. <laughs> I know, that right? extension that he had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would have been fun. Um, but yeah, the, the Bronco pulls the trailer. Great. Um, I think I'm going to pull the uh, spindles open real quick and check the wheel bearings before the trip. But otherwise I think the trailer is set as much as it's going to get for the trip. Yeah. From that, Ultima. that does remind me that I needed to, Yesterday, I was supposed to drop off my trailer, which I didn't, mm. um, at Fat Boy Trailer Repair or whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, it's a trailer spot in Loomis. I did it last mm-hmm. year before Moab. Mm-hmm. I just had them do the once over, give you know, give it a quick look. Mm-hmm. I the trailers. If the trailer was disc brakes, I would do it myself. Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> but I freaking hate <laughs> drums. Yeah. I will pay somebody. Yeah. There's four drum brakes on that thing. You do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I you just open it up and look at it. That's mm-hmm. all I care about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's not it's only a few. It's like two hundred dollars for them to like look over the trailer, mm-hmm. repack the bearings, mm-hmm. put it back together if everything's good. Mm-hmm. Or if something's bad, they fix it. So I did find here's a really cool tip for people. Okay. Um, for the trailer, I bought some remote TPMS sensors. Oh, and what they do is they screw onto your valve stems 
like instead of the cap. Uh huh. So instead of having a valve stem cap, you put on these sensors, they screw onto your valve stems and they will sense the pressure, the air pressure in your trailer tires and transmit it to a receiver that you put on your dashboard in the tow truck. Um, and that's either solar charged solar. It's got a little five watt, maybe panel on the, the receiver, or you can have it plugged in through a USB cable uh. and it will tell you the pressure in your tires as well as the temperature of wow. your tires. That's pretty nifty. I didn't realize it did temperature when I got them. I got them all plugged in and it 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 paired right up to all the sensors, no problem. Hmm. Um, and then it was like, oh yeah, here this this number. I was like, what are these numbers on the side? And it's the temperature of that tire. And I was like, well, that's really handy too. Jeez. Yeah. So that's neat. Yeah. I wonder how the balancing of the tire might be affected by that. I don't know. It doesn't seem I mean I that doesn't seem like it's a lot. I can't imagine. Yeah. It's further on the inside than the rim. So I don't, yeah. Uh, uh, I would, you're, you got to take away the weight of the cap and put on the weight of these sensors. So yeah. I don't know what the Which, delta would be on those. It, well, you've held one. Is it more uh, significantly uh, more? I wouldn't say significantly huh. more. Yeah. Interesting. And so, but it, to read the pressure, it's got to depress the valve core. Yeah. It screws onto your valve stem. Right. And so when you screw it on, it will depresses the valve core. So you hopefully do it. it doesn't leak. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't sound like it was <laughs> when I put it on. Yeah. You're like, why is this t- one tire losing <laughs> one down. PSI a day? <laughs> yeah. But I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, that'd be a neat idea to get for trailers. Yeah. And they're designed for like older vehicles that don't have TPMS in them. And I was like, well, you can use they're that on missing the an entire market. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I think that's the, an ingenious idea for mm-hmm. a trailer. I think, and so far, I mean, we'll see. I put them on the my towing trailer, the big one. I didn't put it on the camping trailer because that's not as critical. The tire pressures in it, but I would argue it might be more critical. You think so? Only to the fact that you, instead of having, if you have a blowout with one tire on your towing trailer, you have uh, another tire to keep it up. Yeah, that's fair. Where if you have a blowout on your camping trailer, mm-hmm. now that trailer drops all the way to the ground. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Okay. But you can you are headed up to the snow this weekend. Mm-hmm. You can try it out on this trailer. Mm-hmm. And then when you so go move on... Move two of the sensors over? Yeah, move two of the sensors <laughs> yeah. over to the camping trailer because mm-hmm. you're not going to use the other trailer in yeah, that time. True. So you can move them from trailer to trailer. That's true. So. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Solved all the world's problems. There we go. <laughs> Look at us go here on Snow Trail 4x4. <laughs> oh, I think that's cool. Were they on Amazon? Yeah, they're like 15, 20 bucks. Dude, I'm going to get some. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Uh, right, I'm writing that down too. Yeah. That'll be in the show notes. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was. those are cool so far. So I just got them set up and running today and I stole a vehicle from Dimitri over at Stellar Built. And I'm going to go play with this weekend. If you're watching Insta or I guess I played with last weekend. Yeah. Um, Well, I guess since this is coming out afterwards, we can talk a little bit about it. Um, I asked Dimitri if he wanted to go up to the snow and play in the snow because we're going kind of on a reconnaissance mission for a buddy. Yeah. And uh, it would be really nice to have a tracked vehicle there. And he goes, no, I'm going to be out of town. But if you want to take the Tacoma, you can. And I was like, shut up. Don't even do that to me, Dimitri. Don't Don't tease tease me. me. And he goes, no, I'm serious. And I was like, all right, I'll be over there Thursday to pick it up. <laughs> yeah. I'm on my way I'm on my <laughs> before he changes his mind. Yeah. So I have currently my possession, the track Tacoma from stellar built. I don't know why, what made him think that it would be a good idea to hand it over to me for a weekend. I know. Hmm. Cause he makes like 20% commission on Ruby tracks. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you're going to go wheeling and you're like, yeah. I need Ruby tracks. Yeah, I do. I know he's going to ruin go, me. Hey, Dimitri, you got any hookups on Ruby tracks? And you're like, yeah, I do. I'm, yeah. I'm making 20% off of Tyler. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, I'm about to get ruined here and I'm going to need tracks for the rest of my life after last weekend. Um, I'll tell you guys how that goes next time we record. So yes. I guess when we get back from my web, but, um, yeah, I put them on, I put those sensors on the trailer with the Tacoma on it and watched them all the way over. And I was like, yeah, it works great. <laughs> so happy with it so far. That's all I got. That's all I got. All right, man. Shall we close this baby out? Let's do it. All right. So yeah, if anybody has feedback for us, if you have any comments about this episode, I know that we have some voicemails. I think there's like three or four of them that we didn't get a chance to get to. We'll get to those after we get back from Moab. 
Uh, so if you guys have want to call and leave some more voicemails, we'll have maybe just a full voicemail episode. That could be fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, have a, we haven't done a listener question episode in a while too. We haven't. Yeah. When we start some people sending those in so we can do a listener question episode, that'd be phone fun. Or phone them in. Oh, phone them in. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do that. 916-345-4744. Um, everybody do that while we're in Moab. And that way, uh, when we get back, we can do like a full listener question voicemail episode. I think that'd be fun. I agree. Um, if you guys want to leave any feedback for myself or Jimmy, you can also do that over on the grams. Um, Jimmy watches over the snail trail four by four Instagram. You could see the shenanigans I'm up to over at four by four Toyota Tyler four by four Toyota Tyler. And then there's also the emails. You guys know what those are. And I rate four by four has some good stuff. If you guys uh, want to send us a DM on I rate four by four, you can do that as well. And yeah, lots of good stuff everywhere. So James denim jet. Do you have any final words for everybody out there? Happy birthday, Dave. And with that, my friends, keep crawling. I have a joke. Do you really? I do. I might have said this one before, but I'm going to bring it up because of uh, something that maybe we discussed in this podcast. Okay. (laughs) Do you know what Mario's overalls are made out of? Oh, I think we have done this one before. Uh, I don't remember though. Denim, denim, denim. That's yes. Yes. Denim, 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 denim. Anyways, I like that one. That one rings back to my childhood. There you go. Yeah.